Hey guys, it is Kenny and Skyler with Rocket City Tactical and we are here at our range Bullet and Barrel and today we are going to take a look at the Taurus G2C 9mm. The Taurus G2C is a compact 9mm polymer frame striker fired pistol with a 12 plus 1 capacity. The barrel length is 3.25 inches, it has an overall length of 6.24 inches, height of 5 inches, width of 1.25 inches, and it comes in at around 22 ounces. It has a traditional 3-dot sight system with an adjustable rear sight. The trigger pull is roughly 6 pounds, which is right around the industry standard for a striker-fired pistol. The MSRP is listed at $315, but you can easily find this firearm for less than $200. Alright guys, so final thoughts on the Taurus G2C. Uh, the grip texturing, in my opinion, could be a little bit more aggressive, but that's just a personal preference. Uh, there is no front slide serrations, but the rear slide serrations are pretty well defined, and there is a small front accessory rail. The high beaver tail creates a low bore axis, and the recoil is extremely manageable. The 12 plus 1 capacity also makes this a very intriguing compact option. The ergonomics and the controls, in my opinion, were more than comfortable. The thumb safety, the slide lock, the magazine release, they were all really easy to ma manipulate on the compact frame. Um, some of the additional ergonomic features, such as the thumb notch on the grip and the finger indentations on the frame, were also a pretty pleasant surprise. Um, I do have some mixed opinions on the overall shooting experience though. I feel like the accuracy is there. Uh, my groups were inside two inches at about seven yards. And one interesting feature on the G2C that I really did like that's not common on striker fire pistols was the double action sear. So for example, uh, if you pull the trigger and you have a light primer strike and the round doesn't discharge, the double striker sear allows you to pull the trigger and strike the primer again for a second time without needing to tap and rack the firearm. That to me is a pretty cool feature to have on the firearm. Uh, so let's talk about the trigger. Now there is a lot of travel and a lot of take up in the trigger and there is a lot of travel uh, on the trigger reset as well. I mean, I feel like the brake is clean, but you need to be prepared because there is gonna be quite a bit of take up to the wall. Um, ultimately, the trigger pull, it's, it's personal preference, guys. I mean, if you're a newer shooter, it's probably not gonna matter that much to you. Uh, my son who was shooting with me, he's a relatively new shooter, and he absolutely loved the trigger and the overall shooting experience. Uh, so let's talk about one of the issues that I did have with this firearm. So obviously if you're going to produce a low cost budget firearm, there's going to be some areas where you're going to cut cost and you're going to cut price, right? Uh, so in the disassembly of this firearm, I did notice that the guide rod is polymer. I really do not like that. Um, so I did a little bit of research and some investigation. I did find that there were some issues with the, with the recoil spring coming over the top of the guide rod, rendering the firearm inoperable. That's a problem for me. Now they do sell steel aftermarket guide rods. So I will say that if you are thinking about buying this firearm, that is something that I would recommend that you spend that extra $30 and you go ahead and replace that plastic guide rod with a steel guide rod because I'm just going to be honest with you guys, I am not going to bet my life on a polymer guide rod. Other than that, I think it's a pretty good gun at a really good price. Just make sure that you replace that polymer guide rod with a steel guide rod. Just drop that extra 30 bucks and do it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. We are Rocket City Tactical. Check us out on Facebook and all the other social media. Give us a like, subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty and keep shooting, guys. <laughs>